Anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration that takes place in the absence of oxygen. It is a metabolic process in which glucose or other organic compounds are broken down into energy in the form of ATP, without the use of oxygen as an electron acceptor. Anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm of cells and involves a series of reactions that result in the partial breakdown of glucose to produce energy and either lactic acid or alcohol and carbon dioxide as waste products. Anaerobic respiration is less efficient than aerobic respiration as it produces a smaller amount of ATP due to the incomplete breakdown of glucose. It is typically used by organisms such as bacteria and yeast when oxygen is not readily available. There are two types of anaerobic respiration, lactic acid fermentation, which occurs in muscle cells during intense exercise, and alcoholic fermentation, which occurs in yeast and some bacteria and is used in the production of alcoholic beverages and bread. Anaerobic respiration in plants. Anaerobic respiration in plants occurs when oxygen is not available, such as in waterlogged soils or during flooding. In the absence of oxygen, plant cells shift from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration to produce energy in the form of ATP. During anaerobic respiration, plants use enzymes to break down glucose or other organic compounds into energy and produce byproducts such as ethanol, lactate, and carbon dioxide. The process of anaerobic respiration in plants is similar to that in other organisms, but each plant species may differ in the type and amount of products produced. Some plants, such as seeds, can undergo anaerobic respiration as a means of survival during periods of low oxygen availability. However, if anaerobic conditions persist for too long, the buildup of toxic byproducts such as ethanol and lactate can damage plant cells and lead to cell death. Anaerobic respiration in animals. Anaerobic respiration in animals occurs when there is a lack of oxygen and is used to generate ATP in the absence of aerobic metabolism. This type of respiration is less efficient than aerobic respiration, as it produces a small amount of ATP and produces lactic acid as a byproduct. During intense exercise, muscles require more energy than can be supplied by aerobic respiration alone, and the oxygen supply may not be sufficient to meet the demand. In this case, Muscles switch to anaerobic respiration to produce energy, which allows them to continue working. The process takes place in the cytoplasm of muscle cells, where glucose or glycogen is broken down into pyruvate and then into lactic acid, which is then released into the bloodstream. While anaerobic respiration allows muscles to continue working, it has several drawbacks. The accumulation of lactic acid in muscles can cause fatigue, pain, and cramping. Furthermore, the small amount of ATP produced means that the energy provided by anaerobic respiration is limited, and sustained exertion is not possible without oxygen. End products of anaerobic respiration. The end products of anaerobic respiration can vary depending on the organism and the specific type of anaerobic respiration occurring. However, the most common end products are lactic acid or ethanol and carbon dioxide. In lactic acid fermentation, the end product is lactic acid. This process occurs in muscle cells during intense exercise when oxygen is not readily available, and glucose is metabolized to produce energy in the form of ATP. In alcoholic fermentation, the end products are ethanol and carbon dioxide. This process occurs in yeast and some bacteria and is involved in the production of alcoholic beverages and bread. It is important to note that the production of these end products allows for the regeneration of NAD+, a coenzyme that is involved in cellular respiration. This is necessary because the reactions involved in anaerobic respiration cannot proceed without a way to regenerate NAD+, for further use in glycolysis. Anaerobes. Anaerobes are organisms that are able to live and grow in environments with little or no oxygen. They have evolved specialized metabolic pathways for carrying out anaerobic respiration or fermentation to generate energy in the absence of oxygen. There are many different types of anaerobes, including bacteria, archaea, and some eukaryotes. Some examples of anaerobic bacteria include Clostridium, which can cause infections and produce botulinum toxin, Bacteroides which are found in the intestine and are important for digestion and methanogens, which produce methane gas. While many anaerobes are harmless or even beneficial, others can cause serious infections or diseases. Anaerobic infections often occur in deep wounds or body cavities where oxygen is limited, and can be difficult to treat with antibiotics that rely on oxygen-dependent processes. Anaerobes are also important in many environmental processes, such as the carbon cycle and wastewater treatment. 
Some anaerobic organisms can break down organic matter in the absence of oxygen, producing methane gas as a byproduct. This process is used in biogas production, a renewable energy source derived from organic waste. Facultative anaerobes are microorganisms that can survive and grow in both aerobic and anaerobic environments. They have the ability to switch between aerobic respiration, which uses oxygen for energy production, and anaerobic respiration or fermentation, which does not require oxygen. Examples of facultative anaerobes include Escherichia coli, Salmonella, and Staphylococcus aureus. Obligate anaerobes are microorganisms that can only survive and grow in the absence of oxygen. These organisms typically carry out anaerobic respiration or fermentation for energy production. Obligate anaerobes may be killed by even low levels of oxygen and are often found in environments such as the deep soil, sewage, and the gut of some animals. Examples of obligate anaerobes include some species of Clostridium and Bacteroides. It's important to note that the ability to carry out aerobic or anaerobic respiration is a continuum, and many microorganisms can exist in a range of oxygen conditions. However, facultative and obligate anaerobes represent two distinct categories of microorganisms based on their ability to survive and thrive in different oxygen environments. Applications of anaerobic respiration in industries and homes. Anaerobic respiration has several applications in industries and homes. Some of the most significant applications of anaerobic respiration include 1. Biogas production. Anaerobic respiration is used in the production of biogas which is a renewable source of energy derived from the breakdown of organic materials, such as agricultural waste, food waste and sewage. Microorganisms like methanogens produce methane gas as a byproduct during anaerobic respiration which is captured and used as biogas. 2. Fermentation. Many industries such as food, beverage, and pharmaceutical rely on anaerobic respiration to produce a range of products through fermentation. For example, Various bacteria and fungi commonly used in fermentation to produce alcohol, cheese, yogurt, vinegar or antibiotics. 3. Wastewater treatment. In wastewater treatment plants, anaerobic respiration is used to break down organic matter in sewage. When microorganisms consume this organic matter, they produce methane and carbon dioxide gas which can be captured and used for energy production. 4. Preservation of food. Anaerobic respiration can be used to preserve food in sealed containers by creating an environment where oxygen is limited or absent. For example, pickling, brewing and other preservation techniques rely on the ability of various microorganisms to carry out anaerobic respiration to produce lactic acid and other compounds that can inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria. Overall, anaerobic respiration provides a range of practical applications in industries and homes, including energy production preservation of food and treatment of wastewater, among others. Differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration are two different metabolic pathways that organisms use to generate energy. Here are the major differences between them. 1. Oxygen requirement. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen to produce energy, whereas anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. 2. Final electron acceptors. During aerobic respiration, oxygen is the final electron acceptor, which combines with hydrogen ions to form water. In anaerobic respiration, different molecules, such as nitrate, sulfate or carbon dioxide, serve as the final electron acceptors. 3. Energy yield. Aerobic respiration produces a much larger amount of energy ATP than anaerobic respiration. This is because aerobic respiration is more efficient in extracting energy from glucose molecules. 4. Duration. Aerobic respiration is a sustained process that can continue for long periods of time, whereas anaerobic respiration tends to be a short-lived process that can only occur in the absence of oxygen. 5. End products. Aerobic respiration results in carbon dioxide and water as end products, while anaerobic respiration produces different end products depending on the specific electron acceptor used. For example, Lactic acid is produced in muscles during anaerobic respiration, while ethanol is produced in yeast cells. Overall, while both processes involve the breakdown of glucose for energy, they differ significantly in terms of their oxygen requirement, energy yield, and end products. Aerobic respiration is generally more efficient and sustainable, while anaerobic respiration is typically less efficient but can occur in a range of circumstances where oxygen is limited or absent.
Respiratory quotient, RQ. Respiratory quotient, RQ, is the ratio of the volume of carbon dioxide CO2 released to the volume of oxygen O2 consumed during respiration. It is a measure of the type of macronutrient being metabolized for energy. The respiratory quotient is calculated as RQ equals VCO2 slash VO2, where VCO2 is the volume of carbon dioxide produced and VO2 is the volume of oxygen consumed. The respiratory quotient differs depending on the type of macronutrient being used for energy metabolism. The RQ for carbohydrates is about 1, since glucose is metabolized to produce equal amounts of CO2 and O2. The RQ for fats is about 0.7, since fats are metabolized to produce more CO2 compared to the amount of O2 consumed. The RQ for proteins is about 0.8, since protein metabolism results in the production of more CO2 per unit of O2 consumed compared to carbohydrates. The respiratory quotient is a useful tool in understanding the type of fuel that is being used for energy metabolism. It can be determined by measuring the volume of O2 consumed and CO2 produced by an organism during respiration. This information can be used to estimate the amount of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins being used in metabolism, and to monitor changes in metabolic rate under different conditions, such as exercise or fasting. Energy value of food. The energy value of food refers to the amount of energy released by the metabolism of the macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats and proteins, in the food. The energy value is typically measured in units of kilocalories kcal, or kilojoules, kj, per gram of food. The average energy value for each macronutrient is, carbohydrates, 4 kcal g, proteins, 4 kcal g, fats, 9 kcal g. Alcohol also provides energy, with an energy value of 7 kcal g. However, Alcohol is not considered a macronutrient since it is not essential to the body. The total energy value of a food can be calculated by multiplying the total grams of each macronutrient by its energy value and then adding the products together. For example, a food with 10 grams of carbohydrates, 5 grams of protein, and 2 grams of fat would have a total energy value of 10 gx4 kcal g, plus 5 gx4 kcal g, plus 2 gx9 kcal g equals 40 kcal plus 20 kcal plus 18 kcal equals 78 kcal. Knowing the energy value of food allows individuals to estimate the amount of energy that they are consuming from their diet. This information can be used to help maintain a healthy and balanced diet, as well as to inform weight management goals. Basal metabolic rate, BMR. Basal metabolic rate BMR is the minimum amount of energy required to sustain the basic functions of the body while at rest such as maintaining vital organs and breathing. BMR is typically measured in units of kilocalories kcal per day and is affected by factors such as age, gender, body composition, and genetics. BMR accounts for approximately 60 to 70 percent of an individual's daily energy expenditure, with physical activity and other daily activities making up the remaining energy expenditure. BMR varies from person to person, with some individuals having a higher or lower BMR than others. There are several factors that can influence an individual's BMR. Age. As we age, our metabolism typically slows down, leading to a lower BMR. Gender. Men typically have a higher BMR than women, due to having a higher percentage of muscle mass. Body composition. Individuals with a higher muscle mass and lower body fat percentage typically have a higher BMR, as muscle tissue requires more energy to maintain than fat tissue. Genetics. BMR is also influenced by genetic factors, such as thyroid function and hormonal imbalances. Knowing one's BMR can be useful for determining daily calorie needs and developing weight management strategies. However, it is important to note that BMR is just one component of the total energy expenditure, and additional factors such as physical activity level and diet should also be taken into account. Comparison between respiration and combustion Respiration and combustion are two processes that involve the release of energy from organic molecules, but differ in several ways. 1. Chemical process. Respiration is a biological process that occurs in living organisms, while combustion is a chemical process that can occur in the presence of oxygen and heat. 2. Type of fuels. Respiration typically involves the breakdown of glucose and other organic molecules in living organisms to release energy while combustion can involve the burning of various types of fuels such as fossil fuels like coal, oil, 
and natural gas, as well as wood, paper and other organic materials. 3. Controlled versus uncontrolled reaction. Respiration is a controlled process, which releases energy in a controlled, step-by-step -step manner to allow for efficient energy use in the organism. Whereas, combustion is an uncontrolled process, where energy is released rapidly with little control. 4. Byproducts. Respiration produces carbon dioxide and water as byproducts, which are typically eliminated from the body. Combustion, on the other hand, can produce a range of byproducts depending on the type of fuel burned, such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, and particulate matter. 5. Energy quantity. Respiration typically releases energy gradually, whereas combustion releases a large amount of energy rapidly. Overall, while both respiration and combustion involve the release of energy from organic molecules, their processes and outcomes are different. Respiration is a controlled biological process that occurs in living organisms and typically produces carbon dioxide and water as byproducts, while combustion is an uncontrolled chemical process that can occur in the presence of oxygen and heat, and typically produces a range of byproducts depending on the type of fuel burned. Respiration in plants Plant respiration is a process of breaking down organic molecules in plants, such as glucose, to release energy, carbon dioxide, and water. This process occurs in the cells of plants, including the leaves, stems, and roots, and is essential for the survival and growth of plants. There are two types of plant respiration. 1. Aerobic respiration. This type of respiration requires oxygen and occurs in the mitochondria of plant cells. It involves the breakdown of glucose into carbon dioxide and water, which releases energy that is used by the plant for various processes such as growth, repair, and reproduction. 2. Anaerobic respiration. This type of respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen and typically happens in the roots of plants or in waterlogged soils. It involves the breakdown of glucose into other molecules, such as ethanol or lactate, and releases less energy compared to aerobic respiration. Plant respiration is essential for plant growth, maintenance, and production of seeds and fruits. The rate of respiration in plants is affected by various environmental factors such as temperature, light, water availability, and carbon dioxide concentration. For example, respiration rates tend to increase with increasing temperatures, which can affect plant growth and yield. Additionally, plants also undergo respiration during photosynthesis where carbon dioxide produced by respiration is used by the plant to produce glucose and other organic molecules through photosynthesis. Differences between respiration and photosynthesis. Respiration and photosynthesis are two processes that involve the transformation of energy in living organisms. Some key differences between them are 1. Function. Respiration is a process of breaking down organic molecules, such as glucose, to release energy for use by the organism while photosynthesis is a process of converting light energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose and other organic molecules. 2. Site of occurrence. Respiration occurs in all living cells, while photosynthesis occurs mainly in the chloroplasts of plants and some bacteria. 3. Input and output. Respiration releases carbon dioxide and water and consumes oxygen and glucose, while photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide and water and releases oxygen and glucose. 4. Energy transformation. Respiration converts chemical energy into ATP adenosine triphosphate, while photosynthesis converts light energy into chemical energy in the form of glucose. 5. Time frame. Respiration is a continuous process that occurs all the time in cells, while photosynthesis occurs only during the daytime in presence of sunlight. 6. Catalyst. Respiration is catalyzed by enzymes, while photosynthesis is catalyzed by chlorophyll. In summary, respiration breaks down organic molecules to release energy, while photosynthesis synthesizes organic molecules using energy from light. Respiration occurs in all living cells, while photosynthesis occurs mainly in plants and some bacteria. Respiration releases carbon dioxide and consumes oxygen and glucose, while photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide and water and releases oxygen and glucose. Revision Exercise 5.5 1. What are the end products of anaerobic respiration in a plants? B animals? Uh, the end products of anaerobic respiration in plants are ethanol and carbon dioxide. This process usually occurs in plants under low oxygen conditions, such as waterlogged soils. B. 
The end products of anaerobic respiration in animals are lactic acid and carbon dioxide. This process occurs when there is not enough oxygen available for the muscle cells to continue aerobic respiration during exercise, resulting in the buildup of lactic acid. 2. Briefly explain the two types of anaerobes. Anaerobes are organisms that can survive or even thrive in environments with little or no oxygen. There are two types of anaerobes. 1. Obligate anaerobes. These organisms require an oxygen-free environment to survive because they lack the enzymes needed to detoxify the toxic forms of oxygen produced during metabolism. Obligate anaerobes are usually found in deep soil, ocean beds, or in animal intestines. They are harmed or killed by exposure to oxygen. 2. Facultative anaerobes. These organisms can survive in both oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor environments. They have the ability to switch between aerobic respiration which uses oxygen, and anaerobic respiration, which does not. Facultative anaerobes include many bacteria, yeast, and some animals. 3. What is oxygen debt? Oxygen debt refers to the amount of oxygen required by muscle cells to convert accumulated lactic acid to glucose after a period of anaerobic respiration, such as during intense exercise. During exercise, when the body cannot supply enough oxygen to the muscles to keep up with the demand, muscles switch from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. This results in the accumulation of lactic acid, which can cause fatigue and soreness in the muscles. After exercise, oxygen is required to break down the lactic acid and convert it back into glucose, which can be used again for energy. The amount of oxygen required to restore the muscles to their pre-exercise state is known as the oxygen debt. The body will continue to consume oxygen after exercise until the oxygen debt is repaid and the lactic acid is removed. 4. Explain the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration are two different processes by which organisms generate ATP energy currency, from glucose. The key differences between the two processes are as follows. 1. Oxygen requirement. Aerobic respiration requires the presence of oxygen while anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen and can occur in the absence of oxygen. 2. Energy yield. Aerobic respiration produces a much larger amount of energy ATP compared to anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration can generate up to 36 ATP molecules from each glucose molecule, while anaerobic respiration produces only 2 ATP molecules. 3. End products. Aerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide and water as end products, while anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid, in muscle cells, or ethanol and carbon dioxide in some bacteria and yeast. 4. Duration. Aerobic respiration can continue for long periods of time whereas anaerobic respiration is usually a short-term emergency measure used by cells when oxygen supply is low. 5. Efficiency. Aerobic respiration is highly efficient and it is the most preferred method of generating ATP in most organisms. Anaerobic respiration is less efficient and produces energy at a slower rate. 6. Usage. Aerobic respiration is used by most multicellular organisms, including plants and animals, while anaerobic respiration is often used by certain microorganisms, and under certain conditions of high intensity, short, duration exercise in animals. Overall, both processes are important for cells to produce energy, but aerobic respiration provides more energy and is the preferred method when oxygen is available. 5. What makes fresh milk to be sour? Fresh milk can become sour due to the activity of bacteria that ferment lactose, the sugar in milk, into lactic acid. This process is called lactic acid fermentation and it occurs when bacteria such as lactobacillus and streptococcus digest lactose in the absence of oxygen. The bacteria can enter the milk from a variety of sources, including the udder of the cow, the milking equipment, or from environmental contamination during storage. As the bacteria consume lactose, they produce lactic acid, which causes the pH of the milk to decrease and the milk to sour and thicken. To prevent milk from souring too quickly, it is often pasteurized, a process that involves heating the milk to kill any harmful bacteria that may be present. Pasteurization can also slow down the growth of the bacteria that cause milk to sour.